Well, hi there and welcome to Lakeside Church. We are an Elim church located here in the beautiful seaside town of Southport in the northwest of England. And we're delighted to welcome you to our online service today. Now, whether you've been a Christian for years or if you're someone who has no faith background at all but are curious about finding out more, we want you to know that you are really welcome here and our hope is that you'll find the service today not only uplifting, inspiring and helpful, but that Lakeside might in the days to come become a place that you too can call home. Now, the service today will be starting in around 10 minutes time and we're hoping that you'll be able to stay with us for it. It's gonna last for around 50 minutes or so and it's gonna include some songs that some of our band will lead us in, a few notices about some up and coming things in the life of the church and an encouraging message from one of our team. And we would love you to engage with us on whatever platform you might be watching this on through the online chat facility. So please don't be shy, drop a comment in there to let us know that you're here with us. And if it's your first time with us, then we would especially love to hear from you as we'd love to get a little gift sent to you by way of saying thanks for being with us today. And if at any time you've got any questions or would love to find out more, then please feel free to get in touch with us. You can head over to our website, the address is on the screen for you. And if you scroll down to where it says contact us, you can either tick one of the boxes on there that might apply, or you can type in your own message and we'll get back in touch with you. But we'd love to connect with you, so please don't be shy in doing that. Now, if you're someone who's interested in exploring not only the Christian faith, but maybe you've got questions over what life is all about, its purpose, its meaning, and all that kind of thing, then we run a course that's designed specifically to help you explore these things. It's called Alpha. You see, life is full of questions, isn't it? I've got young children and they're forever asking me all kinds of questions as they're learning new things and wanting to know why such and such happens. So much fun seeing how they view the world and all that goes on around them. And you know, that doesn't really change as we grow up and get that bit older. The questions might be a little different to what they used to be, but for all of us, we continue to ask new questions based on the experiences we have. And let's be honest, given all that's going on around us right now with this ongoing pandemic, We've perhaps got more questions than ever before. Questions to do with our mortality, the, the meaning and purpose of life. If there really is a God, then what on earth is going on and why is all this happening? If you're watching this right now and if you're being completely honest with yourself and you find yourself asking these kinds of questions, then I want to ask you a question right now. Why not take the time to join with other like-minded people and try and find out some of the answers to those questions that you have by joining with us on our next online Alpha course. Hey, what have you got to lose? And what's more, you can do it all from the comfort right now of your own home. And along with that, you'll meet some great people along the way. Now, if you don't know anything about Alpha, just take a look at this little clip that will explain it in a bit more detail to you. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. My girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible, but the truth is none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken 
and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Interested? Well, here's what you need to do. Simply contact us to let us know that you'd like to be part of this. The best way to do that is to go to our website, www.lakesidechurch.uk, and on our homepage, you'll see that box called Alpha. Simply click on that, fill in your details, just your name, an email address or contact number, press submit, and that will come through to us where Sue, who heads it up for us, will then get back in touch with you. It really is that simple. And if at any time whilst you're on the course that you feel that it's not for you, then do you know what? You can just walk away and no one's going to keep badgering you to get back on board with it. So you have complete control over how much or how little you want to do. That's the beauty of Alpha. So this is your invitation. We'd love to hear from you, so please do get in touch with us. Okay then, we've got just a few more minutes now before our service starts and so now's a great time to go and grab yourself a cuppa so that you're all ready for it to start on the hour. And don't forget, if you've got any questions in relation to anything that's taking place here or you'd simply like to find out more, then please do get in touch as we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you again in a few minutes time.
Well, hello there and welcome to Lakeside Church and to today's online service. We are absolutely delighted that you've chosen to be with us. And so we want to give you a really big welcome. And with it being Mother's Day, then to all you moms out there, can we say a massive happy Mother's Day to you. I really hope that you've been spoiled rotten so far and have been reminded of how much you mean to those around you. Why not drop a comment in the chat facility and let us know if you've had breakfast brought you in bed today or if there's anything special on the venue. You know, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, whatever you've got planned for today, we hope and pray it will be a great one for you. Now, as Richard said, we're delighted that you're with us and we've got a great service plan that is going to last for around an hour. So we hope that you'll stick around with us for the duration. We've got some songs that some of our band will be leading us in, followed a little later on by a talk that Pastor Paul is going to be bringing to us as we continue on with our new series called I'm Still Standing. Pastor Matt brought a great message to us last week, so if you missed that for any reason at all, then head over to our YouTube channel because you can catch it all there on demand. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you might be watching this and this might all be a little bit new to you. And you know, if that's the case, then that's absolutely fine. Our hope more than anything is that you'll really enjoy being with us. And if it is your first time with us, then we do have a special little gift that we'd love to get sent out to you, which is one of our Lakeside pens. All you need to do is say hi to us in the chat, maybe give us a simple thumbs up emoji, and one of our team of online hosts will connect with you and look to get a few details so that we can get that sent out to you. It's our little way of saying thanks for being here with us today. Yeah, please don't be shy in doing that. We would love to hear from you. And if you've got any questions over anything that you see or hear, or would love to chat with one of the team at any time, then please know that again, we would love to hear from you. You'll find all the details on how to do this on our website. So just head over to that again and the details will come up at the end of this service. Yeah, so it's gonna be a great time together. So just before we head into that time of praise and worship, why don't we pray together? And let's together invite the Holy Spirit to come and meet with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice. That's the best response that we can give. We want to rejoice. We want to thank you for your goodness and your provision in our lives. And so come and make yourself known to us over this time that we've got together. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
is one name that conquers every fear. It's one name that makes the blind I see and death is here. Praise be the name of Jesus. Praise be the name of Jesus. It's one name that makes the devil tremble. It's one name with power, he's the king of earth.
Holy Spirit, come and, and break out in our lives, break out across this town, across this region. We want to see you move. More than anything, we want to see a move of your spirit where, where people come to know you and uh, begin to experience you in, in such a real way. Thank you that we can lift up your name. And as we pray, Lord, we can expect to see you move in these days to come. We give you all of our praise in Jesus' name. Oh man, thank you George and Dan for leading us there. Okay, then I've got a few notices to share with you, but just before I do that, here's a little something for you moms out there today. So how was school today? Yeah. I thought the chemistry lab. <laughs> no, no, you, you did, did not. not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a story. Okay. How was choir? It was good. Moms have it so easy. I mean, their lives are fun, simple, and, and so rewarding. Sometimes I wish, instead of being the dad, I, I wish I was the mom. Ah, oh, another day of pedicures, reading my magazines, and making myself beautiful. This is the life. Mom? Mom, tell him to stop copying me. Mom, tell him to stop copying me. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Mom, do something. Mom, do something. Are you serious? Are you serious? Mom, are you serious? Why did I ever ask you to help me? I should have known you couldn't fix my hair. I look like a freak. Look at me. Look at me. Hey, Mom. Look at this. Look at me. Come on, Mom. Look at me. Watch this, Mom. Come on. Look at this. Watch this. Come on, look at me. Come on, Mom. Look at me. Come on, Mom. Look at me. Come on.
<laughs> Mom, I have a book report due tomorrow and I haven't read any of this. Mom, if you don't help me, I'm gonna fail school and be a loser forever. You don't expect me to read this all by myself, do you? You don't expect me to eat this, do you? Seriously, Mom, what is this? Mom, I'm not gonna eat this. Dad, can we just go out to eat, please? Hey kids, be nice to your mother. If I eat this, I'm gonna throw up. Mom, I said I'm gonna throw up. No! <laughs> Mom, I think I'm gonna be sick too. <laughs> You're amazing. No, seriously. I don't know how you do it. I, I, I'm at a loss for words. Kids, come here, get in here, hug your mother. Tell her you love her. We're in the presence of greatness. Dad. Not now, Dad's on a roll. This is God's greatest creation, kids. You're smushing my face. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry, because I don't say thank you enough. I mean, the truth is, I don't deserve you. We don't deserve you. And one day is, is not enough to honor you. We, we should honor you every day. But how do we say thank you to the woman that means the world to us? I know. We're going to go right now and get you that vacuum cleaner you've had your eye on. <laughs> Nothing. Shh, 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 shh. Don't speak. This time, we're going name brand, baby. Come on, kids. Let's go make your mom's dreams come true. Hey, let's give a big shout out to all the moms out there, shall we? We salute you, we thank you for being the heroes that you are. And that goes to all of you ladies, you know, we want you to know that we love you and are so, so thankful to God for bringing you into our lives. And I really hope that you're enjoying your little gift of shortbread that we've had made especially for you. A massive thank you to Esther for spending pretty much most of this past week in the kitchen getting batches of all that prepared and so beautifully bagged up, ready to be sent out to you. And thanks also to all the guys who helped deliver it this week. Okay, then a couple of quick notices for you. First of all, don't forget to check out our Life Groups page on our website as there are new ones being posted upon there. Let's all seek to be involved with these where we can. And if you're a partner and would love to have a go at leading one, then please get in touch with Pastor Matt who can chat that through with you. Secondly, this is just a quick note to keep checking out the website over the next few days as we're hoping to get the booking in system sorted for our car park worship service on Easter Sunday. We'll say more about that over the next few weeks, but this is just to give you a little heads up on that. Thirdly, can I say a huge thank you to you for your ongoing giving of your finances by way of your tithes and your offerings. As always, the different ways that you can give are on the screen for you. And then lastly, if you weren't with us on Tuesday evening for our AGM, let me say another congratulations to John Illingsworth, who unanimously got voted in onto our eldership. John and Tracy, we're delighted that you're on board with us here at Lakeside, and we thank you for all that you continue to bring. Okay, then that's all the notices. We're gonna take the next 60 seconds for our Minute Mingle, and once again, there are a few prizes to be grabbed this week. So in the chat facility, why don't you tell us what you're looking forward to most after lockdown? It could be a haircut. I know for me, that's the first thing I'm gonna be looking to get done. Could be going out for a meal or to the pictures, maybe booking a holiday. Whatever it is, let us know in the chat over the next 60 seconds. You might be glad that you did. Okay, are you ready for this? Let me count us in. Three, two, one, go.
Hey Church, it is great to be with you today on this Mother and Sunday. And I hope today you will be blessed. And as we continue in our series, I'm Still Standing. And as we do, we're going to be thinking about standing up. And as we begin, I want to ask you a question. I want you to get involved. So if you have an answer, I want you to put it in the chat for me. It might also be nice for the fact that at the end of the day, I am not going to be the only person who's in trouble with my mum. So here's the question. What comes to your mind when you think about a mother or in fact, your mother? Maybe it's the fact that they are loving, kind, determined, strong. I ask this because I recently became aware of a backstory of one of the most famous superheroes. And I hope you're all starting to think, what kind of superhero would be created as a result of a mother's actions? Now, if you give this real deep consideration, I do believe that we'll all get to the same conclusion. Okay, I will tell you, it is the Hulk. Now, if you know if you were to create a superhero based on your mum, it'd be the Hulk, right? Maybe not, but Jack Kirby, the co-creator of the Hulk, once recalled seeing a mother in the early 1960s who lifted up a car because of the trapped child underneath. And they used something known as hysterical strength. And it was at this he used as inspiration for the now famous character. This characteristic we often associate with mothers, with women, with heroes, the, the inner resolve to accomplish more than we could ever dream or imagine in the most difficult and desperate situations. And, and it's this that I believe means to stand up. As we look around today, we live in a world that's broken. The, the reason we flood to the cinemas to watch films based on superheroes has more to do with escapism than anything else. We long to live in a world in which we know that at the end of the day, God conquers evil. But then we look and we see what's happening around us. We, we see how money is disproportionately spread around the world. The fact that there are people dying every day because of hunger and not having access to clean water. The inequality in pay between men and women. The global climate crisis that we live in. The mass extinction that is happening in our lifetime. There are children who don't even have access to education. There are women who are trafficked. And men, women and children today live in slavery. And this might be difficult for us to comprehend. And it might not even feel real to us because it doesn't happen here in the UK. But what if, about the fact that there are 4 million children who live in poverty? There are 280,000 people who are homeless in England. 2.6 million people are currently out of work and the majority of which are under the age of 25. There are approximately 1.1 million dependent drinkers in England and over 300,000 people addicted to either heroin or cocaine. We live in a world full of problems and this is far from an exhaustive list. And I don't want you to be discouraged today, but today I want us to be aware and as we come to scripture to see how God can speak into this brokenness of our society and into us as his followers and we're going to read the story of David and Goliath and I know many of you will have heard this account before Goliath was a Philistine warrior or a better way might be a champion he was nine feet tall a warrior from his youth and an imposing man and he called out the Israelite army for someone to fight him the reason why was because in the time when this happened, uh, the war would have not necessarily been happened between one army and another, but by one person against another. And as they battled, it was seen as the warrior gods that were battling to see the outcome. And here we have David arriving on the scene with Israel's army demoralized. Overhearing the calls of Goliath, David couldn't help but question who this guy was and who was willing to go out to then battle Goliath. And this is what it says in 1 Samuel 17, 40 to 51. Then he took his staff and his, in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with a shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked at David over and saw that there was little more than a boy glowing with health and handsome and he despised him. 
He said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I will give you the flesh to the birds and the wild animals. And David said to the Philistine, you come against me with the sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into the hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. The very day I will give your carcasses to the Philistine army, to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered there will know that, know that it's not by the sword or the spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. And the stone sank into the forehead and he fell face down onto the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand. And he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him and he took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from the sheath and he killed him. He cut off his head with the sword and when the Philistines saw their hero was dead, they turned and ran. I love how this story has became so popular and even though I think it's through questionable logic at times. In football, we hear the term David and Goliath match and it's quite often used and even recently with the Spurs versus Marine game and Spurs referred to as Goliath, the favorite, and Marine, the underdog, given the title of David. And let me explain why I don't know if I go along with the logic. As I've already made reference, when they identified the champion were chosen, they represented the gods they served and David a man after God's own heart. Like he was the one who then was appointed as the future king and David was representing the one true God, Yahweh. This is something David is well aware of. And even when facing up to Goliath, he says, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel. This wasn't just a battle of men, but also a battle of the Lord against the false man-made idols. And maybe this was an unfair fight, but not in the way that we've normally perceived it. Perhaps David was always the favorite and Goliath never had a chance. Even if we compare the choices in weapons, Goliath, a huge warrior, has his sword and his shield. We're a massive armor. And then there's David. After trying on Saul's uh, armor, decided it's better to go out not wearing something else and as protection, but places his trust in God and allows his experiences with God to actually make the decision of the weaponry he chooses, which is a sling and some stones. And people might look at this and get confused, but I don't believe David ever went out there to get in a sword fight, mainly because he didn't even have a sword. But David took a sling and stones and now in with a slingshot was a, was a popular weapon of shepherds to scare off animals but we can see that in the book of Judges that there were 700 Benjamite soldiers who were known for their accuracy with a slingshot. And even saying that they could sling a stone at a hair and it would not miss. This battle was never meant to be fair and David played it by different rules. This use of a sling was always going to end in a battle much quicker than using a sword. So maybe if we continue to use this phrase in football, the favourite should be referred to as David and the underdog should be referred to as Goliath. And history has plenty of people who have followed David's example of standing up for themselves and for others and for justice. There's Martin Luther standing up against the Catholic Church. William Wilberforce standing up for the abolition of slavery. Harriet Tubman standing up against slaveholders. Elizabeth Fry standing up for prison reform. William and Catherine Booth standing up for those in poverty. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer standing up against the Nazi regime. One person I want to think about a little bit more is Rosa Parks. Is she, her act of standing up actually resulted in her sitting down. And it happened in December 1st, 1955. Rosa Parks 
was sitting on a bus when the bus driver asked her to stand up and give her seat to some white people. And she refused. And after being asked again if she was to stand up or the police would be called to intervene, and her response was, no, I'm not. And it was this act of defiance that was the catalyst not just for the Montgomery boycott that followed on the 5th of December, but was a catalyst for the civil rights movement. And I think what would be so easily missed here, just like with David, is what happened before the moment of standing up. That, that allowed for this to be not just another nice story. You see, Rosa Parks was deeply embedded into her society, volunteering at numerous organisations and churches. And it's thought that Rosa Parks' service, friendship and faith, which crossed both racial and economic backgrounds, was one of the main reasons that this injustice, like the injustice present in this moment, was caused to be a catalyst for real change. So, so what are we to do? I want to take three things away from today that I believe that we, if we start implementing in our lives, we are going to be standing up. And the first is we need to stand up for a different kingdom. As I mentioned, David was representing the God of Israel, a different kingdom. It was Rosa Parks' faith that was a bedrock for her actions. And we too should continue to pray that God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We too, like the apostles, have been sent out in Luke to chapter 10. And to announce the kingdom of God is at hand. And as Jesus announced his ministry, he used the words of Isaiah in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. He said this, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news for the poor. He sent me to proclaim the freedom of the prisoner and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. These words were the beginning of Jesus' ministry and it set standards for a new kingdom and we are to stand up for this different kingdom. The second is we stand for a different way. And as I've just said, Jesus' announcement for his ministry was the inauguration of a new kingdom. His kingdom, and as we read these words in Luke 4, we are to proclaim the good news to the poor freedom for the prisoner and the year of the Lord's favour. And as we look to next week with Pastor Dave, you will find out that you can't do this by acting like everyone around you. We've got to live by a different standard. We've got to play by a different rule book. We stand for a different way. So don't be dis surprised when your faith calls you to stand out. And as we stand up for a different way in our actions, it won't be the same. And we see in the story of David how that he didn't live in fear of Goliath and he knew God was with him. He didn't just know, but he was convinced. He wasn't playing by the normal rules of combat. He actually went to a sword fight with a stone and this gave him an advantage. Walter Winker, theologian, became known for Jesus' third way and understanding of Jesus' teaching as non-violent resistance. And in fact, it was this that this notion that separated Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. from the contemporaries and their fight for racial justice. We look around the world today and yes, there's been progress made in these areas, but as I mentioned as a church, we should, we've been commissioned and we should be continuing to work forward in this as we live for a different kingdom. We should be fighting for the freedom of the oppressed, the, for economic change and for creation care. And let's see these things birth even in Lakeside and it should be having not just a significant impact here but it should be having a significant impact out in Southport. You see we are called to stand up for a different way as we live for a different kingdom because we have a different hope and that's my third point we stand for a different hope and it's in this that I hope that we can start changing how we work because it's not by human politics or great ideas that we all get to a better place. We don't believe in some kind of utopia before the time of Jesus. So you see, our hope is placed in Jesus and his resurrection. And in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he writes in chapter 15, which he ex essentially explains the resurrection as being core to our faith and without it, we're still in our sin. But Paul goes actually further and says Christ is the first fruit of the resurrection and we too will change from being earthly men to heavenly. 
And as we continue to understand the words of Jesus, we continue to believe and expect that his kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. You see, we don't live in a life in which we think this world will just pass away in vain, but we have a hope. And it says in verse 58, it goes, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. The work we do today is not in vain because we stand for a different hope. As we come to finish, as we think about this week, we can learn from David and how he fought against Goliath. This really is a picture of how Jesus and how Jesus viewed the world differently and from a different perspective, was willing to stand up for God and stand up for people and stand up for hope of a better future. And we too get to participate in this kingdom, this hope, because Jesus is willing to sacrifice himself for us. He's willing to take our sin and our shame away so that we can participate in him in a different kingdom. And we get to celebrate that he is still alive and he calls us to be co-laborers. He calls us to work to bring about his kingdom today and a kingdom that will never perish. And what a privilege is that. So this week, I want to challenge you to consider what it is that you stand up for. And don't just stop by thinking and considering what this kingdom is and the way that we are doing it and the hope that's found in. But I want us to think about the work we do today is for eternity. That as we build God's kingdom here, that we build it in Lakeside and it will last forever. So today, we are called to action. We are called to respond. And each of us has a response and it will be different. And if you've heard today's message and never accepted Jesus for yourself, I want to give you that opportunity today to build his kingdom. We must be a part of it. And if that's you, I'd encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Thank you, Jesus, that you chose to die for me. You chose to sacrifice yourself for my sin and shame. And I make the decision today to receive what you've done for me and I put my hope in your resurrection. If you prayed that prayer today, I want to encourage you to click the button um, that has just come up on Church Online or if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, if you want to make a comment so we can send you something that will help you begin this journey and work it out for yourself because you've made the most amazing decision and we want to help you on that journey. And as I hand over to the band for one final song, let's pray together that we accept our call to participate in your kingdom, Jesus, and let your kingdom on earth come as on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Jesus.
Yes, Lord, we echo what we've just been singing in that your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we really hope you've enjoyed being with us and that you found it helpful and encouraging and that throughout the remainder of this day and into this week ahead, we'll all be thinking about what it is that we can be standing up for. Yes, and thank you, Paul, for that really challenging message to us. Now, please remember that if this has been your first time with us, then do get in touch as we would love to begin a conversation with you. And if you head over to our website on the address that's on the screen, our online form will take you less than a minute to complete and it means we can get that all important pen out to you. Yeah, and if you place your comments in the chat during our Minute Mingle, then keep a look out this week as once again, for some of you, there might be a little surprise gift of some kind finding its way through to your door. Now, just before we finish, don't forget to let us know if you prayed that prayer that Paul led us in at the end of his message to invite Jesus into your life. You know, it really is the best decision that you can ever make. And we'd not only love to celebrate that with you, but to also get another little gift out to you that will be really helpful as you begin this new journey. And then lastly, don't forget to hop onto Zoom straight after this service for our post-service hangout. The login details will be coming up again for you in just a moment, but it really would be great to see you on that. Yeah, but whatever you have planned for this week ahead, let's make sure that we remain connected with one another. And once again, to all you mums out there, we salute you and we thank God for you. Have the most amazing week. God bless.
Yeah.